The question is, will the pressure ease off any time soon? A burst of cold weather or, for example, an upsurge in flu cases could add to the high levels of pressure being experienced right now. Hugh Pym, BBC News. Well, Stephen Dorrell, the uh, former uh, health secretary uh, who now chairs the NHS Confederation, the umbrella body for NHS trusts and health authorities in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, joins us from Westminster. It's good to see you, see you Stephen. Thanks for being with us. Um, Theresa May today said that uh, there are a small number of incidents that suggest that there are problems in the NHS. Many people believe she was underselling the crisis in the service. What do you believe? Well, statistically, she's right that the vast majority of patients who are seen in the health and care system receive a high quality service due to the dedication of the staff who work under great pressure in the service. But the truth is that a single individual receiving care or treatment uh, that doesn't match our standards is an issue. And the truth also is that there are increasing numbers of people, still a, a relatively small number, but far too many people who don't receive the quality of care and support that all of us would want for ourselves and for our families uh, from the health and care system. Mm. You have done what Frank Field did a little bit earlier when I was speaking to him. You've joined together the health and social care system. The problem is, practically, certainly as far as the money that's dished out to both services is concerned, is separate. But it's the problem that the social care service in England doesn't have enough money that is causing a problem with the NHS. And surely there's got to be much more of a holistic approach to both services in order to deal with future problems. I could not agree with you more. Uh, the truth is that uh, by uh, defending the NHS as a as a, as I sometimes say, a city on the hill, as a silo divorced from the rest of public services, social housing, social care. All of the rest of public services meet demands uh, that are real and human. And when they don't meet that demand, uh, they, those individuals end up too often in GP surgeries and in A&E departments. So it's, we need to see the NHS in the context of the broader range of public services. That's why the argument about funding of social care is not a different argument from the funding of the NHS. It's precisely the same argument, and it's also why uh, I, along with Norman Lamb and others today, have been arguing that we need to look at the way our health and care system is funded and, and also at the way that the systems are managed to make sure they, that to, to change them so that they work better together than they do now. Uh, a penny on national insurance, would that help? Uh, I think it's inescapable that we're going to need to provide more resource, in particular for social care. But I think it's a mistake to think all you need to do is to raise tax and send them the money. Mm. What we have to address, and that's why I'm in favour of looking at it more fundamentally, is the need to break down...